Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to speak a bit about using um, electromagnetic radiation in communications. And so this is focused mainly on radio waves, but we also use microwaves and as well, we will use light and infrared. And so to begin with, we're going to have a look at radio. Now, the first thing we need to know is how we actually produce a radio wave. Well, we have something known as an aerial. Okay, so an aerial. And what we do is we apply an alternating voltage. Alternating voltage. That's very important. It's not a direct, it's alternating. And that alternating voltage has a certain frequency. So it will alternate at a certain frequency. And this frequency, so the frequency of that voltage, okay, is equal to the frequency of the wave. So we can change the frequency of our radio wave by changing the frequency of the alternating voltage. So for example, let's say we have this aerial. We're just going to call this, this here, we're going to call this an aerial. Okay. We apply an alternating voltage, I'm just going to say AV, to the aerial, and that will emit radio waves. Let's say that these are the radio waves being emitted. We then have a receiver aerial. So we have an aerial, just do it a different shape. So this is the receiver aerial. And let's say, for example, this is a radio that you might be listening to in your car or whatever. This aerial will be connected to a loudspeaker or whatever speaker it is. Okay. And this receiver aerial actually receives this frequency of radio wave and then it creates an alternating voltage through the aerial. So we've got alternating voltage to radio wave, back to alternating voltage, and then that is connected to a speaker, which will then emit sound. So obviously sound will come out of your speaker as a result of this alternating voltage. So that's a very simplified diagram, but it does paint the picture for you. Now importantly, we split radio waves and even microwaves into different bands, and we split these based on their wavelengths. So wavelength bands. Okay, and the reason we categorize them like this is because different wavelengths um, will give us different properties and so we use them for different things. Now in general, if we have a shorter wavelength, so if we have a low wavelength, I'm just going to write lambda, which means wavelength, that means that we have more information. So we can carry more information in waves which have a lower wavelength, okay? And that's because they have more energy. Now, however, they do have drawbacks, so they have a shorter range. So the range is less, but also they spread out less. So less spreading. Okay, and this is a result of them not diffracting as much as a larger wavelength um, radio wave. So less spreading is good because you're going to get less interference. More information is, of course, good because we can carry more energy, uh, which is useful. But the range is lower. So if we have a look at the smallest um, band of wavelength in terms of radio waves, well, it actually overlaps with the microwaves. Microwaves and radio waves do overlap. And microwaves obviously have the smallest wavelength. And so we use these for satellite TV. Okay, mobile phone, a lot of it is used um, using microwaves and so on. That's because we get less spreading out, so we don't get the signal weakening. They can also travel um, through the Earth's atmosphere to satellites, um, and I went over that in the last video, so if you don't remember that, then please do go and have a look. But they can travel to satellites as a beam and then come back down. Okay, and obviously as they can contain more information than a longer wavelength radio wave, that means that using them for TV means we can get the picture and the sound. Okay, so how about radio where the wavelengths are less than one meter? These are generally used for TV, which is not satellite TV, okay? So the more sort of traditional standard TV. Um, that's because they need more information because they carry the sound and the picture. So these need to carry more information so we um, allow there to be a shorter range and that's why we use them. Now, how about radio where the wavelength is between 
1 and 100 meters. Okay, now this allows obviously the range to be greatly increased, but it's going to slightly reduce the amount of energy and information that we can take. And so that means that we use this for our radio. Okay, so actual radio stations, they don't need to uh, broadcast TV signals. So the picture, which is going to take up the most amount um, of information. So the radio can be broadcast using this. Also, it's used for emergency services because we have a limited range. And so if you um, contact emergency services using those radio waves, you're going to get emergency services which are based relatively close uh, to you. Okay, and lastly, what about radio with wavelength greater than 100 meters? Well, this is all about um, increasing the range. And so this is going to be international, international radio. So if you want to broadcast a signal, a signal across countries, so even to the whole world, you're going to be looking for very large wavelength radio because you want the range to be as large as you can. This will limit what you can broadcast and it will also cause a lot of spreading out. But um, in order to broadcast um, low, in, low amounts of information across a large area, we use wavelengths above 100 meters. Okay, now, so what about mobile phones? Now, mobile phones are interesting because they use two separate um, types of wave in order to transfer their signals. So we know that lo local mobile phone masts are what enable you to have good signal or not good signal. Now, when we call someone, we need to transmit information from our phone to a local mast, okay? That mast is then gonna transfer the information to where you need it to go. Now, our mobile phone is gonna transfer uh, radio waves at wavelength of around about 30 centimeters, okay? That still technically is in the radio wave um, uh, sort of bracket, but there is an overlap with microwaves. So often, this is referred to as a microwave, but it is borderline. So it's a radio wave sort of slash microwave. It's on the borderline, okay? Now the masts will use radio. There'll be different frequencies depending on how far it needs to go, but they will use radio waves to allow the larger range to reach the mobile phone because obviously we can phone people all over the world. And so then a local mast picks up that signal and then transmits a shorter wavelength signal again to your phone. So this wavelength here is going to be around about 30 as well. So it can reach your mobile phone. Okay, importantly, there's a lot of debate about whether mobile phones are damaging to your health. That's because this wavelength 30 centimeters contains a lot of information. Microwaves also allow heating and this wavelength is sort of on the borderline and it will lead to a slight um, amount of heating. And people wonder, you know, if you've got your mobile phone next to your head all day and it's transmitting these waves, is it cooking your brain? Now, that's a blunt way of putting it, but that's the real sort of theory behind it. And so some people say yes, some people say no. There's all sorts of conflicting evidence on this. But as a result, um, it has been recommended that young children shouldn't really be using mobile phones just as a precaution because, you know, down the line, it could turn out that this is doing us some damage. Okay, and so lastly, we're going to have a quick look at optical fibers. Okay, I've mentioned this in previous videos as well, but let's take a look now. So optical fibers can transfer a lot of information. So lots of info or information and that's because they don't use microwaves or radio waves often we will use light so visible light or infrared these have a way lower wavelength than microwaves and radio waves which means that they can transfer a lot more energy and information than the radio waves and microwaves can that's why fiber optic broadband is meant to be much faster than traditional types of broadband so what's actually going on is we have a fiber, which might just be a wire like this. Let's just use the color red to show our light. Now light is going to be bouncing like this inside the fiber. Okay, so this is a result of reflection. So we've looked at reflection before. If you don't remember how it works, then please have a look at my video on that. But the light doesn't escape outside, it is reflected. 
okay and that means that it can trans it can travel sorry forward and forward and forward through the fiber because it carries more information than microwaves and radio waves when this reaches its destination you've got a lot of energy and information there now this is great because we can transfer that amount of energy it also means it's more secure more secure and that's because we're not broadcasting the signal to a massive space because obviously if someone could hack into you and pick up your signal um, like if they hacked into your internet then you've got a problem but if it's coming through a fiber then obviously you know exactly where that information is going and it's not escaping that fiber so all the information that you are transferring is packaged in this fiber okay and so I mentioned before that infrared sometimes is better than using light even though light has a lower wavelength and so therefore can carry more energy than infrared can. reason infrared is better is because some light can be absorbed. So light can be absorbed by the cable or the fiber. Okay, Whereas infrared is not so easily absorbed and so we get a more efficient transfer down the fiber. This just depends what the cable is being used for, what, what energy we're transferring, what information we're going to be transferring through the fiber as to whether we're going to use light or we're going to use infrared. Okay, so I think I'll stop there. Um, that's pretty much an overview of those uh, communication techniques. If you do have any questions on this, please do feel free to send me an email using the direct link below or post a comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.